didn't want to do this as a live feed, but the fact is it's going to take forever to get the video up. There's a video loading right now to YouTube, um, and I owe you guys content for today. I apologize. It's going to be another live feed. This might be a long one. So we're going to talk about what I think my top five folders for 2020 are this year. Um, there's one or two of them that might have been, they might have come out before 2020, but I didn't get to see them until 2020. So let's see who all's going to get here. Who's the first person? Bradley. Who else is here? So Steve Picker, Steve, your knives are here. They're done. I'm going to get them shipped out to you probably tomorrow or Friday. So I love knives. How you doing? So we're going to talk about my top five starting at the bottom. And I have a couple of honorable mentions. They just didn't quite fit into the top five. So yeah, I'm going to throw your beat in with it too. So the top five, let's, let's just go ahead and start. And it took, I sat and I had to do some thinking. I even wrote stuff down. So we're going to start with number five. So number five for me for 2020, like as far as folding knives that have come in that I've gotten to test this year that are fairly new is going to be the CJRB. Now you got to remember how many videos, that's two videos a week since January. These are the top five that have come in this, this year. And, and these are newer models. CJRB Feldspar. Great, great knife. Uh, it is really nice. I'm actually going to do this as a giveaway. Super, super good knife. Edge geometry on it's really good. Comfortable in hand. Re reversible pocket clip. The micarta on it's done really well. You guys saw the video. So this knife is, I'd have to say, is was in the top five. I knew it was going to be in the top five. A couple of these knives I knew were going to be in the top five. Um, but I went through my list of videos after I edited the other one and I started loading everything up. And I just kind of picked the knives that that I, I really liked. And you're going to find CGRB is well represented on here because like I know a lot of people are like, oh, I hear comments like, those are garbage and I got one, it was horrible. I haven't had a lemon. I know that people do get lemons, but the fact is CGRB and Artisan are really good about handling things like that. So they're well represented on here, even though there's a lot of people that just kind of don't like Artisan. Um, but yeah, CGRB Feldspar. Nice looking knife, brass pivot collars, well ground, great, great knife. So that's number five, number five. And I'm going to post up, I'm going to write it out and I'm going to post it up what my five were in the uh, community tab. So you guys can go back and reference. CJRB Feldspar, number five. Number four, another CJRB. I really, really like this one. This one's not going anywhere. I'm keeping this one. Uh, I, I like to do the stuff that comes in for free as giveaways, but I like this one so much, I'm keeping it. So this is the CJRB Centros designed by Dylan Mallory. This is a really good just all around package of a knife. Nice and thin, it fits your hand really well. Really, really well ground blade, nice and straight, but still has some belly. Really, really good piercing tip. Almost a tactical folder, I would say. Lock up on it's great. Uh, it's a good looking knife. The G10 is done just about perfect. The action on it's great. The jimping is just about perfect. And surprisingly that it is that much smaller in handle compared to this one. Uh, but I find this one a little more comfortable because it's thicker. I don't, I don't necessarily like some of the knives that have been contoured. This one's just nice and straight, but it has been chamfered enough. It's nice and smooth. It takes a beautiful edge. This one's probably going to get a black blade to, because it's D2 and I don't want it to pit and rust. Um, Great, great knife. Hells an edge really wrong. It does remind, I was going to tell you, that's exactly what I was going to say. It reminds me a lot of the TRM Atom. I didn't like the Atom as much as I like these two knives here. And these knives are really, really similar. This one just kind of edged it out because, I, I don't know, it just feels better in hand for me. So, number four is going to be the Centros by my buddy Dylan Mallory. Really, really nice knife. He's doing prints of this, like art prints. So that's number four. Uh, you just missed the first, you missed number five, which is the uh, CGRB Feldspar, number four being the Centros. So now we leave CRGB and we get into, this one was a hard one because I really, really like this knife. So I had to think about it real hard. 
Um, I just like the elements of the next knife a little bit better than this one. And this is my Fair and Forge Design Stinger. This is a great, great, great little knife for all around. This is a super light knife. This, I will put this in my pocket and forget it's there. Slices like nobody's business. This is actually a prototype. So mine is not in Nitro V. Mine is actually in 9CR18 MOV. And it does great even at that. It is super thin behind the edge. Cuts really nice. Comfortable in hand. Really, really light. Really light. This is, this is what, this is what did it. I'm not a big, huge fan of the pocket clip. It's not a bad pocket clip, but it's also not as good as the next two knives. But all in all, this knife is great. And as you can see, when I like a knife enough that I take my personal knife and I refinish it, that means I like it. That means it's a winner in my book. This, these next three knives, this and the next three knives, hey Luke, just knocked out of the park. It was really hard to come up with a clear winner on these next three. The one, one, the, the one that was in first place was without a doubt, I already knew it. But these two. So this one is, like I said, this is a prototype. I'm gonna redo this pivot. This knife gets carried a lot. It cuts really well, really, really nice blade shape. Another one of those knives that comes down, it still has belly, but it's fairly, you see what I'm saying? This, this blade shape, this style blade shape, really, 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 really nice blade shape. Um, so this one's on my list. This is number three on my list. And like I said, don't forget, we have some honorable mentions. And when we're done with this, we'll do some just question and answer stuff. This is you guys' content for today. There's a video that's going up as a live premiere. I'm going to change that. Um, I'm going to change it from a premiere to a, uh, to a scheduled for Thursday. Uh, I am going to shoot another video. But yeah, great, great design. The, the fuller on that lightens the blade, but it also is effective as an opening aperture and mine's red you know i'm i don't know i don't know what to do i don't have wi-fi in the kitchen and apparently now i don't have enough signal without wi-fi to run it let me give me don't go anywhere we still have two more knives to cover don't go anywhere i promise i'm coming back i see people are leaving stop it no my internet went out let's try this so you know I might come back to this if this doesn't work. So, yeah. So, there we go. That's that's number three. I'm sorry. That's number... Yeah, that's number three. So, number two... I mean, you guys knew this was going to make the list. CJRP Rhea. Like I said, the only, diff, the only thing that kept this from... This one from beating this one... This one is a little bit more versatile blade shape, I think... And I mean, it's just an attractive all around like outdoorsman's kind of package. Appeals to me. Minimal, minimalistic things kind of do appeal to me. The action on this, that was the other one. So it was the it was the way it looked, the way it felt in hand. And it just, that blade shape really speaks to me. But that action, that action was the one that really kicked it over. That is just insane. Now, I do know that mine has an aftermarket pocket clip. So mine's got a kind of a custom clip on it. Even with the regular which is the one that I have for the giveaway, which is right here, new in box. Even that pocket clip is not bad. This pocket will just, just put it over the top. So that is my number two, the CGRB Rhea. I love the steel, that ARRPM9. It holds up really well. The, the, the fit and finish on this is really, really nice. I love that micarta. It feels great in hand, even when it's, even when it's wet, it feels great. Ah, well, here's, you know what, Ryan? I got a lot of lefty friends that started carrying righty knives because you can. <laughs> this is my right hand. I can do it left-handed. I'm not even left-handed. I imagine that if you really wanted to do it, my, I keep hitting it with my other finger. Great, great, great little knife all around use. And they're not, that's the thing. That was the other thing. The, the, both of these knives were a great value for the price. I just thought that this one was a little bit better. Nope, it was a general admission. You just have to go find the video and uh, comment. Your comment is your entry. This one I actually do need to tighten the pivot down on. I, I carry it so much that the, the thing. So now, now let's get into the honorable mentions. So there's two honorable mentions. 
Uh, and the first one, because they both come in about the same. This is the, now I did do a black on my blade. Um, this is the QSP. Hey, be quiet over there. <laughs> my wife's sitting out here. She knew, I told her she's wearing headphones. She's watching TV. This is a QSP penguin in the, the denim micarta. This knife was another one. I got two of them. One of them went to you guys. This knife isn't going anywhere. And once again, I like it enough that to preserve the blade, I coated it because it's D2 as well. This knife hits way above its weight class. It's nothing fancy. It's just bare bones, good utility work knife. And it, it holds up. I've used it a lot. Um, but it is D2 steel and it has a tendency to oxidize. Knowing that, I went ahead and I just did a black ceramic coating on the blade because I have that available to me. So that's the first of the two honorable mentions. I, I can't tell you guys how surprised I was that this knife, it was the first of those $30 um, budget knives that I got that were just off the charts good. So QSP Penguin, that's the first of the honorable mentions. And then just the only reason this wasn't on my list in my top five, because I truly, truly, truly love this knife, is it's just not a knife that I can carry all the time. And it's got some limitations because it is that big, heavy, beefy, artisan, mastiff. I can't carry this. The reason that most of these knives are on this list is because I can carry them anytime. Shorts, track pants, jeans, it doesn't matter. I can carry them. I can carry them in a waistband of a pair of sweatpants if I want. This knife, not so much. This is a big seven ounce hatchet with a handle. This thing is amazing. It's an amazing, amazing knife. Uh, I love it so much, but it's just not something that is an, a friendly, easy carry. And the other thing is most of these other knives I can have out, I can pull out in public and it doesn't, you know, it's not going to really probably bother most people. That looks aggressive. You pull out a full-sized kitchen cleaver that you fold open and people are just going to, they're going to flip out. But this knife is gorgeous. Fit and finish on this was amazing. This wasn't handpicked for me. This just happened to be one that Russell had at his place uh, to, sh to send to me for me to use on the channel. Liked it so much, he told me I could keep it. Like I said, usually the knives that come in, they go back. They get given back or, or given away. Um, but there's a couple knives on this list. The Centros, the Rhea, and, and this. These are staying. Um, so there's our honorable mention. So, what's the number one knife? What's my number one folder pick for 2020? It is the Wii Minax. And I refinished mine. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see the bronze lines and everything on it, but I orange peeled this. I orange peeled the pocket clip. This knife deserves another video. This knife is incredibly versatile. It is great. This knife cuts so well. It feels great in hand. Pocket clip is just about perfect tension. Everything about it is just about perfect. I have to say that this is, and I told Elliot and Chris this this morning, I was like, I, it's not because we're friends, you know, because I don't like some of their knives that they've designed. This has to be my favorite design they've made production. This is it. This is my favorite knife so far. The recurve belly up here, this big belly, it slices so great. Super thin behind the edge, 20 CV steel, Good jimping, huge finger aperture, great pocket clip. I've carried this on the job site. It, it holds up to the rigors of working on a construction site. Um, cutting filter fabric, cutting visqueen, cutting into wood, just, you know, dirt and grit and stuff all over it. And it still held its edge and it still cut beautifully. So, yeah, this one, this one is, of the knives that I've seen for 2020, this is my favorite, the Wee Min Axe. It, it was really hard. I mean, I was looking at it, I was like, I just, I have to do it. Like, like I said, when I go to the trouble of making a knife pretty, that means I really like it, especially if it's one of my personal ones. Guys, there's 19 people here and only nine likes, if we could rectify that. So now what we've got is let's do an open forum. What do you guys think was the best knife of 2020 so far? Something I may have missed, something I didn't necessarily get. And if it's something I didn't get and I didn't video re review it, maybe it's something you'd be willing to send me. So let's talk about that. Because like I said, this is your content. The winner. The, do you know the one really nice thing about this too? Is it's so thin. It's so thin and nice 
that there's most times that I use this and then I would just come home and I'd just do this. And that's all it took. And it's back to screaming sharp. It, it just tears through stuff on the job site. And then if I just uh, do this, Uh, Xerxes? I don't remember which one that was. YouTube has not let you like videos for two days. Hey, live Mr. Pants. Mr. Mr. Purple Pants. How you doing? You're Mr. Purple Pants a lot like... You're my Mr. Purple Pants a lot like Captain Kangaroo had Mr. Green Jeans. How's that? You like that? Oh, I'm not a fan of Persians. I'm not a fan of Persians. What's up, pants? Yeah, I was going to shoot this just as a standalone video, and I was like, uh, I was like, you know what? Why, why not just do it live? I've got the knives out. I knew it was going to take me hours to do it. I Oh, there's one that didn't make the list because I just couldn't carry it enough to make it one of my favorite. The Arian uh, by Artisan that's coming out, that prototype from... Um, my friend uh, Chris over at Cerberus Knives, the Orion. That's a great, great, great knife. Uh, I just didn't carry it enough to have it be on that list. Um, what was this? I'm, I'm missing a bunch of stuff here. I want to get the the Sir. What is that? Just a little later, I can actually catch one of these streams. That one. Oh, okay, okay, the Cerberus ones. Okay, yeah, that knife. Th there's a chance I might actually have to spend money and get one of those if, if I can't get one through, through them and carry it for a while. I did a video, um, the video that's going up today um, for the member, and I have to I have to change that. So I've got a, a Cerberus Arian, that's great. Um, I, uh, I did a video of my favorite fixed blade, and I did the same thing. I picked... I had to go through it, and so I got my, my five uh, my five favorite fixed blades, and I had to pick one. And you're going to be really surprised if you guys watch the video. I'm not going to let it out of the bag, but you're going to be surprised as what my favorite fixed blade is. And this isn't just like my favorite fixed blade I've had in a while or it just came in. No, these are knives I've had since I was still active duty. Like So we're talking 10, 11 years now. Some of these knives I've had since I was a kid, and I went through and I picked my five favorites, and out of those five, I picked my favorite. And it's it's a lot like this. It's going to surprise you what it actually is. So what was that? What was that, Matt? I don't like the Persian blade, or is this something? I just I don't like I don't like that big Persian sweep. Um, I've gotten to where a lot of the knives I like are due to the fact that I don't lose tension on my cutting or warnies. There's, there's a big reason why this was made. Uh, because if you're using a knife that is shaped like this, which this is basically, that's a drop point right there. If you're cutting and then it drops off, you lose that pressure on it, you know, unless it's on something. If you're like cutting freehand off of something, like if you're cutting a line, it'll slip off. So it'll cut, it'll cut, it'll cut, and then it slips off. The Warncliffe, you get it on there, it cuts all the way to the tip. So... I told you, I'm not going to tell you guys anything. Keep guessing. I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you. Even if you're right, I won't tell you. Uh, but yeah, this is, uh, the edge comes back over. It's dude, it, it strops up so well because it's thin. I did bend my, I bent the tip on my, I don't know how well you can see it, but I bent the tip on my during testing. But I was doing stuff with this knife that I knew it wasn't supposed to do. And it still did it. And yeah, I bent the tip, but I was able to straighten it out pretty much. No folders this year. That's not making my list for me. I own fixed blade TRC Apocalypse. Um, so yeah, I like the Warnies. This this is uh, this keeps. I, I I'm I'm a designer. I know I'm supposed to like my own knife, but the fact is, this knife just wound up being way better than I ever thought it was going to be when I started making them. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's funny. That's funny. You're a funny guy. You're a funny guy, Sully. That's why I kill you last. So, yeah. What else? What did you guys... 
only ones on my list are the Ferox, Mordax, and Amazon. Uh, yeah, but I was trying to do knives that either were released late 2019 into 2020. So I was just trying to do my favorite fixed blade, or my favorite knives of 2020. So I think all of these, except for these two, released in 2020. And that's part of the reason they wound up being... I think this was released prior to 2020. I think it might have been at Blade Show West. And this definitely was last year at Blade West. They had it. So, I mean, the knives that came in for 2020 and the new knives of 2020 was what I was going to do. I, I mean, I, I told you. I wasn't joking, Neves. Um, Neves, I still have your knives here, and I will get them shipped to you. Um... Feel free to hold on to those Ferrum Forges as long as you want. Um, the only one that I ask you not to use that I, you know, the one that I ask you not to tear into and you're like, you can use all of them except the, the one that's hand carved. Uh, the spinner. Um, you know what? I have, I have a guy that I was going to do the Demco knife with, but we argue all the time. And then the other day we had, we had a, we had a big fight and I, I'm still, I'm still mad, and I th and this one I don't I don't I'm not even going to apologize for this was not me. A lot of times I'll admit that sometimes I can be cantankerous and temperamental and hard to deal with, but this one I, I had reached my limit and there was warnings that were given. So I'm uh, I'm going to say we were probably both at fault, but I'm not going to I'm not apologizing for me because I uh, so not budging on that one. So if you have one you'd like to send me, that would be great. Um, I reach a point, you know, I reach a point where I'm willing to apologize and I'm willing to concede a little bit. This time, I don't think that I was wrong and I was really mad. So we're just going to leave it at that. But yeah, I, I would love if you have an 80-20. I did an 80-15, not such a big fan of 80-15. Don't get me wrong. It's a great knife. It's just not a knife for me. I love the 80-20. I love the Demko 80-20. Um, it, it's... I don't know why I like it so much because it's got some stuff that should be... It's one of those knives that, like, I don't know why I like it, but it is a great knife. Um, and the, the one that you had on your channel was... That would be the one that I would like to see on the channel. Um, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do with this one. I think I'm going to have to refinish this blade. I got this knife from uh, Artisan. It, this is the Mini Predator. And, uh, yeah, it's the Shark Fin one. This is the Mini Predator, and I actually like the Mini Predator better than I like the Big Predator, the full-size one. Um, but it's in D2, and it rusted really badly. So I think before I do a giveaway for this knife, this knife is going to get a, a ceramic coating. But it's a really, really nice knife. Oh, my daughter's doing a, a zoom. So you're going to hear noise in the background. My daughter's going to be doing her zoom. So hang hang on just a second, guys. We're going to be really quiet when we go in here. And I'm going to turn the light on for her because she always forgets. And she does her homework in the dark. So. Worst knives of 2020? Um. I had a couple knives come in. That Emerson, I'd have to say, would be the worst knife of 2020. 29 people, 18 likes. If you guys are here and you're sticking around and you're enjoying the videos, I'd appreciate it if you like them. I know it sounds like begging, but like I've been talking with a bunch of other YouTubers. And they're like, yeah, you got to. You got to push that because that's the only way the channel grows. And he's like, if people think you're begging, it's just, it's, it's, it's really not. So, um, I didn't have many bad knives come in this year. Um, I had one, you know, the, I would almost say the Drifter. From uh, snack, I was at snacks. Well, what was it? That wasn't snacks. Nico has it. It's the Drifter. It was that full custom. I can't think of it now. Not. It wasn't a snacks. He had a snacks, and I didn't like it at all. See, I've gotten, I've gotten to where what I'm started doing is if I just get to a point where I have a knife that I just, I can't, I can't find any positives. Um, if I can't find any positives, I just, like, I just kind of just don't do it. Um, I had a couple knives come in. The Prince Custom was great. No, I love that Prince Custom. I love, I love Princeton's knives. Um, Snacks. I didn't, I don't like, I haven't liked any of the Snacks knives, really. I, they're just too, they're too over the top. The Skiff, that's what it was. Skiff Blade Works Drifter. 
That knife, I can't say it was a bad knife, but I just couldn't carry it. It had a bad pocket clip, and I don't mean it was uncomfortable. But let me see, let me get a big knife. Okay, so picture a knife this size, but with a pocket clip that comes all the way down here like this. So the knife, like almost full length of the, the handle, the pocket clip went, and not that that was uncomfortable. I, I, wore, I, I held it a bunch of times. I'm like, oh, you know what? That does, it's not a hot spot. It just feels weird, and I would, I would mess around with it a while, and I, I got used to it. I definitely did find that what a problem I had with it was the first time I tried to carry it, I put it in my pocket. And like I said, the pocket clip was about that long. Like it was like more than half the length of the entire handle. And when I would get in and out of the car, the first time I ever did it, it and I tested it a second time, put my seatbelt on and I'd run my seatbelt across my lap. And as I was sitting there, what would happen is my seatbelt would come clear up under the clip. Now I've had it catch on the, you know, on my pocket clip before, but just on the tip. Ethan ruins EDC. Howdy. And what happened was with that one was because it was so much longer that the, I got the seatbelt under and it went all the way up under. And when I stood up, I was like, oh, I'm going to, when I took my seatbelt off, I was like, I almost ripped the pocket clip off of Nika's brand new $800 knife. I was like, well, we're not carrying that one. But it was, I mean, the knife itself was nice. It had some small elements, but I only had a couple bad knives come in and I just didn't do videos about them. I just sent them back. And and I, I, told, I told people like, okay, so David over at Blade Banner, David's knife came and it wasn't a horrible knife. It's just, I couldn't get in my hand. It just was not comfortable for me. Um, don't know, I've never gotten one. I, I don't look at knives unless they show up here. I don't even bother. Um, but that, uh, I mean, I'm sure I could look it up, but if I haven't handled it, I can't give you an opinion. I, I don't, I don't do blind opinions. I don't do blind based opinions. I, I have to have had the knife in hand before I give you an opinion. It just keeps me honest that way. Um, it, there wasn't that David's knife was bad. It's just like, I couldn't, I couldn't comfortably hold it. I just didn't like the hand positioning and things like that. And it just basically threw off my ability to to carry it. I just, I couldn't get around the way it felt. So therefore I didn't carry it. So it didn't get a review. I just sent it back to him. I was like, sorry, I held on to it so long. I know that I needed to go to other places, but I was trying really hard to carry it and get a feel for it and, and see if I would get over that, the, the weird feel. Um, so for me, like we all know, I wear like triple XL gloves and my, my hands are so big that my ring does not fit on a standard ring sizer. Uh, for me, it's how's it feel in hand? The first thing, the first thing I look for is, okay, first thing I look for is the blade shape going to be something that's functional. I don't like the Persian style blades with the big sweep. I already know I don't like those. So the first thing I look at is what's the blade shape? And then I look at what's the handle feel like? And then I look at what's the pocket clip? Because there's a lot of times for me, a way a pocket clip feels in hand can be a showstopper. I've had a few knives come in that, that just felt, they were great, great knives. I just, I couldn't get past how they felt in hand. And Alex, since you're here, I will let you know I'm shipping your knives hopefully tomorrow. Uh, I do have to drive all the way to LA in the morning and back because my daughter has physical therapy. But when I get back, I'm planning on packaging your stuff up and, and Steve's stuff and a couple other things. Um, oh, I know one of the knives that just was horrible that came in this year. That's... Uh, Spider Coast smock that came into me. I despise that knife. I don't like anything about it. I don't like a thing about that smock. It, it nope. It was a no go. And I mean, there's there's a lot of Spider Coast knives that I just don't like. This one was like just disdain. Like I got it in hand, and I'm like, nope, I don't like anything about this. I do not like a thing about it. But at any rate, what I was saying is, so the first things are, how's it feel in hand? Uh, is it comfortable? Is it something that, because for me, a knife is a tool. I'm going to use it for work. Am I going to be able to work with it? Is it going to, is it going to bother me? How's it carry? Yeah, they all right. It, it, it just wasn't a knife for me. And I just didn't feel it was a good idea for me to do it. Um, so then, so first thing is blade shape, then how it feels in hand, then pocket clip. And after that, you know, it's, it's little things like, is this going to be a bear to carry? How thin is it by the edge? Is it too thin? How's it ground? The last thing I ever look at, the very last thing 
is the steel and the art and, and the heart, Rockwell. And a lot of times I don't even look at the Rockwell. If it's a knife I like, I don't really care most of the time. I just don't care what the steel is. To tell you the honest truth, there's a lot of guys out there like, oh, it's got to be a super steel. I'm perfectly fine. Like if this knife came with a 440C blade, I still would love it. I still would say it's probably one of the best design blades. I just have to sharpen a little bit more often. You know what I mean? It's like, I, I mean, I'm comparing this knife in 20 CV that is basically a hand carved maker's choice with a, a, a thick 20 CV blade to, to this really thin 20 CV blade. And I, I can honestly say, I think they're every bit as good, but I can also say, you know, that's 20 CV, super steel, the AR or PM9 in this. I don't have any problem carrying this or this. Like I, the steel for me is, I know there's a lot of guys out there that chase the Rockwell hardness and they like the exotic super steels and stuff like that. But you know, for a knife, we used 440C and stuff like that for so many years and they were fine. They were great knives. I still have knives. I have knives that belong to my father that he had when he was a kid that were in 440 steel. And I don't see that it's that big of a difference. I'm not seeing, when you look at the price per pound of some of these steels, I just don't see it being the, I don't see it being the end all be all. I did do the super steel stuff for a while. Like, oh, I gotta have these super steels. But what I've realized is some of the other steels sometimes are better. I am not going to lie to you. If I had a choice to make a custom knife in 20 CV or ARRPM 9 right now, I would probably make the knife in ARRPM 9 because it's affordable. It's a viable steel. It's a powdered metallurgy. It cleans, it grinds up nice and clean. And it's easy to resharpen and it holds an edge comparable to some, some really higher tier steels. But then I can just drop this up and it comes right back. ARRPM 9 is great. I, I know these things. Um, VG10. I like VG10. I was just getting ready to say it. VG10. I honestly don't look at steels the same way a lot of these other knife nuts do. Um, so it's just, you know, it's a matter of preference and people are like, oh, I can't believe you say you don't care about Rockwell. Well, it's, I really don't. Like, I care about Rockwell as long as it's in the realm of, of what I, I think it's in that realm of yes you need to look and check and make sure the rock well is correct because that'll tell you what that's a baseline to see if you got a good heat treat or not did you did you fall in that range of hrc i honestly to tell you the truth don't care if my knife is 57 rockwell or if my knife is 62 rockwell unless i know that a steel that is supposed to be in, unless i'm looking at it i'm saying that steel still annealed and hasn't been heat treated Case in point, let's say um, S125V. S125V, before it's ever heat treated, is still like 55 Rockwell. Guys, there are steels out there that are in knives that after heat treat are 55 Rockwell. There's a lot of people that if I ground that knife before heat treat and handed it to them, they wouldn't know. So with that, I wouldn't want a... a, a you know, I have to look at the rock well as to what steel it is. Is that the right range? Because that means it got heat treated. You see what I'm saying? But for me, like, I don't, I don't look at the heat treat. The, the rock well, I mean. I don't look at it. Because I really don't care, to tell you the truth. Because to me, it's not anything I ever worry about. Um, and I, this, this, this steel in this $50 knife performs as well, if not better, than the S35BN that's in this $200 knife. I haven't seen a marked difference in edge retention. I haven't seen a marked difference in, you know, reliability. I haven't seen any difference, but I will tell you that this $200 knife is not as easy to bring the edge back up as this knife is. They hold an edge. This holds an edge comparable to S35BN. 
good S35VN, not soft S35VN. You know, there's some companies that do S35VN a little soft, um, which is fine because I know that that allows you some sharp resharpening, ease of resharpening and stuff like that. This does as well as the S35VN I'm seeing come out of companies like We and React and, and, and things like that who do their heat treat really well on S35VN. So um, it's just a... Uh, I really don't like either, to tell you the truth. I have auto knives, but I really don't like either. Like that's, I don't have, except for the autos you saw in the video of autos that I have. And one of them was a gift from Alex. I don't have autos except to fidget with. I have two. So one of them was a limited edition one that I got and I, I wanted it. And the other one was I bought, I, back in the day, I bought them, I think those were 2000. 12, 2015, somewhere in that range, something like that on those knives. I bought them. I had three of them. I wound up keeping one because my daughter liked the Tonto one. So basically, to tell you the truth, that the, uh, the big ultra tech that I have is mine. Hey, my daughter's. So I just don't see... They're a novelty. They're not greatly functional. Um, some people are like, oh, for guys that have to wear gloves, it'd be great because they have a switchblade. And I'm like, yeah, but then... They, they gum up really bad. They get dirty really easily in that mechanism. And so, you know, the trade-off is now your knives are, uh, your, your knives aren't going to be as great because the action's all screwed up on them. Because those springs get dirty so easy. Pocket lint and stuff. Now imagine if you're outside working and now that knife is full of not just pocket lint, but sand, clay, and mud, and water, and all that other stuff. I just... I don't think they're as reliable. They're kind of fun. They're kind of cool. But I would prefer this. That little fixed blade that is ridiculously sharp and thin and slicey. I just, I'm going to have to get a replacement. I'm going to have to buy one. I did dink the tip on this. It's bent. And I can feel it. Don't do the testing on this knife. I've already done the testing for you. The Manix 2. I don't like any of the Spydercos, except the Endura, to tell you the truth. And I'm not even a, such a big fan of those anymore. I, I don't like anything coming out of Spyderco. I don't think the quality... I don't think their quality matches what you're paying. So it's, uh, you know, it's one of those things. Like I said, they're like the Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Have I tried it? Yeah, I don't like the Minax. Or the, the, the Manix. I don't like any of the Spydercos, to tell you the truth. Uh... I, I take that back. The Para 2 is not a bad knife. The para, the Paramilitary was a bit big. The Para 2 was fine. But then they made the Para 3, and I'm like, well, that just looks ridiculous. That is the silliest looking knife I've ever seen. Big handle, little itty bitty blade. I'm like, uh, I like the Para 2. I'd say if I was going to get a Spyderco, and I wouldn't buy it directly from them, because God knows I don't want to support them, um, I would much rather support a, another vendor, a, a secondary market. Um, I I just don't like it. Um, I don't like the native. I don't like the... I don't, there's a lot of them I don't like. Don't get me wrong. They make okay knives from time to time. I, I had a... I had a knife in... Spyderco knife in for pity... Or that I got the handle. I was like, actually, that's not a bad knife. And I don't remember what one it was. I know that they have a couple of the small ones. Uh, the Sage is not a bad little knife, but it's still not. I, I think that they're still charging too much for them. I'm just not a fan of Spyderco. I, I think that they're really just kind of overpriced and underwhelming. Oh, I, I've already handled a bunch of Tucson's. I'm not a folder guy. Here's the thing. There's a lot of differences between developing something like this, which is just a piece of steel with handles, designing all the stuff, the marriage and, and the, the, the lockup and the angles and the blade grinds and all the pieces, parts and bearing pockets, pocket clips. There's so much stuff in it. I think it would, I think, I, cause I don't design it on paper really. I mean, I make a knife and then I see how I like the, the customs. So the customs wind up being like a prototype. And then I, you know, if I like it, then I, I, 
I basically just Elliot helps me render it. Like Elliot takes it and puts it on, on a render. If I had to do it, if I was going to do a folder, I would have to sit down and I'd have to learn how to use, I'd have to use, learn how to use the, the software to design it. And I think that all those things in it would detract any enjoyment I take from making knives because I would have to make one. You know, I have a proof of concept. I would have to prototype it. No. Because I just don't want to have, I don't want to have those things. It, it takes, it takes so much out of everything. Favorite production folder, but hands down the Riat Horizon D. I did a video about it. It's the best production knife I've ever owned. It still is. It's the first high end production folder that I ever bought. I, that, but prior to that, it was a lot of customs and stuff like that. I had some custom folders that I was not as happy with. I had some, I had a hinderer that I really wasn't happy with either. So yeah, I mean, my favorite production knife of all time, I think the best production knife I've ever owned of all time is the Riat Horizon D, that titanium one that I've got. It's around here somewhere. Just don't know where I put my knife case. Hands down, the best, and I'm gonna stand by that forever. So, because until until somebody makes a knife that is better than that, which I don't think that they, I don't, it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be a hard one. I mean, this is up there, and it's still not even, still not even close. I mean, this is a really, really good knife. Like I said, this is my number one pick, in 2020. The Horizon D, Steve. I made you buy one, or this one. So yeah, like I said, if you go back, if you're just joining, if you go back, I picked my top five. This is my number one. This is my number one knife of 2020. And it's the Wee Min Axe designed by Fire and Forge. And everybody goes, because you're friends with those guys. No, it has nothing to do with it. You want to see why? And we, we noticed this the other day. Elliot and I did, and he goes, we've, we've noticed it on a couple of things now. Um, do you see... Some common ergonomic elements in these knives. You know why? People are like, oh, you just copied. I didn't. I made this knife before Elliot made this one. This knife has been around for a year before this knife ever got designed. You know why? Because Elliot taught me how to make knives. So my ergonomic cues and things like that are all things I've learned from him. Like how he makes a handle. What he does... Um... What he does when he, what he thinks about when he makes a knife. I kind of learned those things from him. And so there's going to be a lot of similarities in design and things like that in my knives because he, uh, he, he taught me how to do it. Uh, it's a lot like when you look at, um, what's his name? Uh, crap, I can't think of it. I did a video about it here not long ago tom mayo anyway young you know ari kid in hawaii that tom mayo taught how to make knives i can't think of his name right now i did i did a video i had two of them here that we picked up at the california custom show my buddy matt did i'm drawing a blank I'm drawing a blank guys i haven't been sleeping well so give you guys another We'll just make it an hour. Give you guys a few more minutes. Uh, Wee Minax, since I bought the Wee Malice. They are. They are. There's, I mean, this, I love this knife. And people look at it, I'm like, my God, that's ugly. Well, to me, I find it gorgeous. Everything about it. Elliot knows that I like the, the, the Geiger stuff that he does. Uh, that is actually a raised inlay. He milled out a slot and put a copper inlay in it and then milled the spine into it. So if you look, that actually stands up higher than the rest of the knife because it was a big chunk of brass that he mashed in there. Or copper. It's copper. Copper? Yeah, copper. And so it, you know, he mashed this big piece in, it stuck up, and he cut that all out, and I I don't know how well you can see that. We'll, we'll, we'll turn this around so you can see. So he didn't mill, he didn't cut all this stuff down. He just 
put a high spot of copper on the middle of that and then hand carve that. So, and then everybody's like, oh, wow. And then he, that's all hand textured. He even textured and rock patterned the standoffs in this knife. He didn't mill that. He didn't mill any of that. That was all done with a Dremel. He just milled a slot. Like he mill, he did use the mill to cut a slot, hammered the copper in, and then that was all done with a Dremel. That was all hand Dremel, hand carved. That's one of the things Elliot's famous for is hand carving their titanium knives and doing some crazy, crazy, intricate carvings on knives. And yes, it is a gorgeous Warncliffe blade. This thing cuts, it just screams through cardboard. It's always in my pocket. It's probably one of my most carried knives. You saw the one, so Neves did a video about one of the knives that I have that Elliot carved. Um, I, have t I have two hand carved. Um, I have two hand carved Ferrum Forge Maker's Choices. I have this one, and then he has, the Neves has the other one, which is the Spinner. And the spinner, if you find his video about the spinner, it's insane. It looks like a fish and it has scales carved in it and on the pocket clip, on the on the knife itself and on the pocket clip. And everybody's like, oh wow, how'd he get those milled in there? Did What did they do with those laser cut? And I was like, no, he sat there and free handed those on there with a Dremel and he holds it. And I don't mean, he doesn't have one of the ones with the big long connection. He takes a full, a regular Dremel and a fool holds a Dremel, like a full size Dremel in his hand like this and uses it like a pencil and just goes to town and carves these intricate, intricate, intricate designs. That one's not as Geiger. So the spinner, he did a nautical theme. And so there was some, there was some fish based ones and I mean, there was a lot of different ones, but he decided to make that one into a Marlin. That was the name of that one. That one was the Marlin. Um, he used to, he used to name the maker's choice knives. Like he actually took time and sat down and named them. Uh, but yeah, this one is really Geiger-esque. I told him though, that he missed a very, very opportune chance to use this blade shape and call it the Klingon bird of prey because that's what it reminds me of is the Klingon ships from Star Trek. It really does. Like the swept down nose. Yeah, they had a little bulbous area, but they swept down and it looks like a hawk. Actually, it does look like a bird. It looks like the Seahawks logo. Now I can't ever catch it again. I can't ever unsee that. <laughs> Just kidding. I like that knife too much to care. So, what's everybody? Anybody got anything else? Or am I going to get out of my wife's way so she can start making supper? And she can take her headphones out. So. Oh, I get to start working out again on Monday. I've had, I haven't been able to work out really because I had the, the, the surgery. Uh, not just once. I don't know if I told you guys this. I went back. So I had the tooth pulled. Then I went back and they got me a COVID test, a rapid COVID test because they couldn't give me anesthesia without it. They pulled the tooth without anything. And then I had to go back for the actual bone removal and they got me a rapid uh, COVID test so that they could put me under. But then they cut a bunch of bone out. So I'm still having some lingering pain in that jaw uh, because they couldn't stitch it they just had to leave it open because I had so much infection in there. I just, I don't know how it got that infected that they said it probably had been infected for a while. So, all right guys, I'll tell you what, I'm going to get off of here and then I'm going to go change the settings on that video that's currently going up so that the, the, the members get it tonight and then you guys will get it on Thursday. And then I will try and film some videos tomorrow. It's just been hectic. I, I've been gone Saturday I was gone. Sunday I didn't feel good. I laid in bed all day. Yesterday I was busy. Today I took daughter to 
I had to take my daughter to her, to her coach's house so she go skating. I had to stop by the shop. I'm working on a knife. John Grimsmo asked me if I could measure the stop pins on this knife for him so that he can send me a stop pin so I can fix this guy's knife. He's basically going to let me do that. And then um, Polar Weiss. Um, and then I had to go pick my daughter up. I shot the video in the, in the intern. It's just been busy. We had a toilet that went bad. I had to get a plumber out here. I had to fix some stuff. It's just been hectic. It's been hectic. And then I had the surgery and I just haven't felt great. So I apologize. I will clean, pick up the content. But I need you guys to do me a favor. If you guys have something you would like to see on the channel that I haven't already done, send it to me because I don't have, I don't have a way to buy these knives. You know what I mean? Knives that come in are a hundred percent sent in for review or sharpening. So I don't know. I don't know. I, I here's okay. So I will tell you my thoughts on steel. I like M4. I like 4V and 3V, but those steels have a tendency to rust real easily. Um, and I have a friend, I have a friend that's like, oh, I'm going to get this knife, this folding knife in 3V. And I was like, I wouldn't absolutely not get a knife like that in 3V. Something is in my pocket. I know how much I sweat, especially if I'm working. I can make 20 CV rust. So I'm not such a big fan of 3V and 4V. M4 is not as bad, but the, the steels that really rust heavily, not such a big fan of them in, um, in folding knives unless you coat them like i said d2 d2 is up that alley but this is in d2 so what did i do i black ceramic coated, coated the blade on this because i don't want this to rust i want this knife to stay nice as long as i can if that means that i coat it like i said this centros is going to get a coating so that it doesn't go back because i'm keeping the centros all the other knives that artisan sent me i'm giving away this is a Rhea that's going away. This is, oh, I have to get this out to this guy. This is the crag that that guy won for my Instagram giveaway. Um, I do Instagram giveaways occasionally. Really didn't have anybody drop in on it. And then this one is the Feldspar. I'm giving away the Feldspar. So these are all giveaways. Friday, we're giving away this one. And I'll show it to you. So it's, it's new in box. This is a CGRB Rhea with the standard clip and I'm not gonna lie to you it's not a bad look I just don't like it as much as I like the other clip it's got a little high point on it great great clip but I guarantee that you can reach out to CJRB and get that pocket clip and put it on your knife so great 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 little knife and I have one that I'm gonna give to you guys never even been in pocket only has been in the hell I still have the little I have the little mints that they send with the knife. Okay, put them in there for you so you got a snack when you get the knife. If you have not went to that video and made a comment to enter as for the giveaway, you probably should because I do the drawing on Friday. Guys, I'm out of here. I love you all. Take it easy. Sorry that this is your content for today. Talk to you later.